If you just downloaded Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, you might be extremely confused about what the hell is going on and how everything works. I personally played a Yu-Gi-Oh! game from like 20 years ago and thought I knew how Yu-Gi-Oh! worked and apparently I was dead ass wrong. So this whole guide is to get you jump started on how everything works in this game generally. I'm not going to go into super advanced stuff though, like card combos, that type of stuff. That's going to be more advanced stuff, but I am going to explain how spells work, how traps work, you know, how to get gems, is it worth getting dual pass, like all these different things I'm going to touch on lightly. And I'm going to just show you how everything works. So obviously this is the main menu. Um, up here you have missions. Missions, make sure to do your daily missions if you can, because you will get gems. You definitely should do these and get your gems along with a lot of other things that you can do with gems, uh, you can get gems from. But then you take your gems to the shop. We're going to start off with this, just because we got to start somewhere, right? You can go to the shop, you can buy more packs, you can get more cards here, uh, that type of stuff. Uh, you can go through, also buy accessories, random stuff, change how the dual field looks, that type of thing. Um, and also you can buy the dual pass in here. If you buy the dual pass, it will make you get additional rewards, which will actually pay for the cost of the dual pass if you go all the way to level 100 in a season. Uh, it'll also make it so you get more of these tokens, which we'll go over in a minute. These are crafting tokens. There's normal, there's rare, there's super rare, and ultra rare. That's what those uh, letters stand for. And you use those to craft cards, which then brings us to the deck. So the deck, obviously, is where your deck is. So you're going to pick, like, say, random deck. You're going to edit the deck. And then this is your deck that you are using. Now, obviously, you're going to click a card over here. You're going to right-click to throw it on. Uh, right click take it off the deck can be apparently according to what the game has been telling me is 40 to 60 cards so you actually have choice in how big you want your deck to be and then we got extra deck and these are cards we'll get to it in a minute in a little mock duel or whatever or some duel i'll show you how this things work in the actual matches uh, a little bit in this, later in this video but uh these are extra ones that you can use to summon uh at any point if you have the correct cards on the field so in the case of this one you have to have five dragon monsters available to you. I'm pretty sure for this one, they can be on the field or in your hand. Although don't quote me on that. I'm not hundred percent sure exactly on that, but they're all like that. There's a trillion different cards like that, uh, that all have different requirements of how to do, whether they have to be on the, in the on the field, in your hand, in the graveyard. It's insane how much is in this game, guys. It's actually mind boggling. Uh, over here on the right are all the cards in the game. If you scroll, start scrolling, you'll realize there's literally thousands of them, maybe even over 10,000. I don't know. I'm not going to count them, but it's actually just ridiculous. And every single one has these crazy conditions. So whenever you play a card, some cards are just normal monsters. But a lot of cards are like this, where it's like, if you control this character, you can special summon this card, blah, blah, blah. You can target up two zombie monsters you control and declare level five, which allows you to build decks based on anything under the sun. Do you want to build a deck around zombies? Well, then this card is going to be a relevant card because all of its effects are about zombies and stuff. So... It's, you know, you could be lost in here for the next 10 years trying to build decks. That's how this game is. It's actually amazing in its own way. Uh, so then the other thing that I need to touch on, so now you get the basics of how that works. We got uh, three different types of cards, generally speaking, uh, maybe four in a way. Uh, we got actual monsters that do have stats. They have attack and defense. They have a little star and all that. Uh, and then we also have this type of monster, which is usually a fusion summon monster, but I still include that in monsters. There's different types, you know, normal summon, effect monster, spell caster, you know, Monsters, though. You know, monsters. To simplify it, oversimplify it. You also have spell cards, which will go off on the left of your cards. I'll show you in a little bit. We'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, and these all do specific things. You can activate them, uh, you know, depending on what they are, they activate at different times, do different things. Uh, very useful cards go in the spell thing sometimes. Uh, and then there's trap cards, and you can place as many of these you, as you want in a turn. If you have a full hand trap card, you can throw all five of them down in one single turn. Uh, they all obviously do different things. And you can activate these whenever there's a certain queue at the right time, depending on what the card is. Uh, so there might be a card that says when your opponent does something, do whatever. And then when your opponent does that, it'll pause the game. Basically, it's your turn for a second. And then you choose, do you want to activate it? Do you not want to activate it? That type of thing. Okay, so that's general trap cards do. That's oversimplification, though, because there's a trillion different trap cards in this game. All the different things have different triggers. But that's generally what a trap card is in this game. That's generally what you're going to be doing with it. Now... You might be wondering, how do you get more cards? Okay, well, you know, I showed you the shop first because you can buy decks and you can buy starter, you can buy packs that have random cards, just like back in the day when you would go to like a Walmart or something and you would just see a pack of Pokemon cards and you'd buy it have random ones in it, right? You could buy those. And then when you get duplicates, you can actually dismantle them. Uh, there's a few different ways to do that. Uh, not, not that, that's filter reset. Um, you can dismantle all extra cards, dismantle selected cards. And uh, I don't have any duplicates right now, but you would dismantle, like you can dismantle anyone that you have more than four of, 
uh, and it will give you these tokens. So we got normal, rare, super rare, ultra rare. Well, you're collecting these so that you can craft cards. It's not the only way. I'm gonna go through the crafting one first. Uh, so when you go through these, you pick a card and say, um, this one is ultra rare. You can see right here to make it, it's gonna cost 30 of the UR tokens, which is ultra rare. Every single card in this game only takes 30. It's just a matter of, is it ultra rare, normal, super rare, or whatever, you know? So as you dismantle your cards, if you dismantle enough cards, you can actually hand pick what cards you want to have, okay? Uh, the other option is you can click this how to obtain button and it will tell you what type of pack it comes from. In this one's case, it comes from master pack. It's a randomly, you know, it's a random drop from the master pack pack, uh, but you could find it in there. That's how you could find this one. Uh, and then Iron Core Synthetics, which I currently have locked. It's probably a secret pack, I would assume, which uh, there's a whole section for secret packs. They're unlocked by doing solo things and whatever. Uh, and then another thing that I want to mention before we uh, get off of this area of the game, this star, okay? If it is more than four stars, it means you have to summon it somehow. So uh, this card can only be special summoned by removing play one Iron Core Quimer from your hand, blah, 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 blah. Or, you know, it might just be that you have to just summon it. You have to discard a dragon monster from the field in order to summon. And I think the game's kind of like that to stop people from just being like, turn one, here's a 5,000 attack monster. And I instantly, you know, just change the whole game. Uh, you kind of have to build your way into a duel by starting with four star or below and then using those to summon the six stars or the eight stars or whatever, that type of thing. And when you're in a duel, it will tell you what you generally need to do in order to summon it, what its requirements they are for different ones and whatever. But the general, general rule of thumb is uh, it just dismantle or discard a lower level one to get a higher level one. But it, there's a trillion different triggers in this game for everything, so that's oversimplification. Also, there's a type right here at the top right is what type they are. There's light, there's earth, there's dark, uh, or maybe that was dark. I can't actually just, I wish they didn't have a Chinese symbols or whatever it is and just English symbols, but there's four there's different types. There's like earth, uh, water, fire, light, dark. I can't remember all of them, but yeah, there's five different types. Oh, and also to mention, there's a dismantle button down here too. If you want to dismantle with there, it makes it a little more simple. If you just do want to do one at a time. Uh, you also, oh, back in there, I'm not gonna show, but you could rename the deck at the top. You can also make a new deck right here, create a new deck. And then there's also copy from public deck, a copy from structure deck. Public deck has a trillion different decks for you to look at to copy, but you have to have the cards or else there's no point in doing it, but it'll tell you what cards you need to make that deck. And there are, it's an infinitely generating list, basically. It'll keep on just making more as you go. There's tons of decks to go from. So that is all that's in there. Oh my God, so much. Uh, and then we also have this section called the solo section, which I would recommend doing just to get free gems and stuff. There's all this stuff. You get free cards, you get free whatever. So I'm gonna do one I haven't done yet to show you. Uh, you can redo them, but you only get the reward a single time. So you go through these and when you do it, uh, it'll say the first time I will get three of this thing. Uh, when this card is normal summon, you can shuffle one card from your hand into the deck then draw one card and then you special summon it if it is a monster. You know, it's, so I will get three of those for that one. Um, or I will get from this one, three of this one, or one of this reward, or you get to the goal and you get this thing, you know, so these are something you could do for a little bit of practice. A lot, there, it, you'll learn a lot about the game from these. There's a lot of stuff in here about how to special summon, how to do all this type of stuff that's freaking crazy to try to do in an actual duel, if you just learn on the fly. Uh, another thing that's also really useful, I don't know if it'll always be accessed from this area of the game, but uh, if there is a thing of doing spectate, if you click this, it'll show you duels that have already happened. So you can watch them to try to get a feel for how things work and stuff. And you can pause them. It's like a replay, it's not a live one. So uh, you can just pause it and then watch and then think about what they're doing and what the hell's happening and stuff to try to figure out how the game works. That could also help you. Uh, another thing I should mention, if you have friends in this game, you click friend up here. You want to add someone, basically. I guess you, there's following and followers, almost like Twitter. You want to enter their player ID. You can also look like title, apparently. But uh, player ID. To find your player ID, and I'm probably going to get a trillion friend requests if this video actually gets views because of this. I'm going to show mine. Uh, you click the thing at the top left, it shows your ID right there. That is what you'll be giving to your friends so they can follow you or whatever. So, yeah. And that's how you'll, you'll need to follow other people. That's what friends are. I don't know if there's actual friends list. It's more of that. Uh, notifications go right here, basic stuff. We'll get to a duel in just a second though, but notifications there, we'll check all that. Also, there's the sub menu, settings, stuff. I'm not gonna go through settings of all this stuff, but there's dual settings, uh, replays, different things like that. 
Uh, so that's the basics of all the menuing and what's going on in this game. Uh, let's go into an actual duel though and I'll show you some of the basics of how cards work and stuff. So when you start a duel, whether it's against players or against the AI, you'll see something about your deck. You can change your deck right here. Click it. Uh, you can edit deck. I didn't mean to click edit actually. Um, you can click it and then change deck and pick whatever your deck you want. So that way you can make sure you get the cool one you started with instead of the starter one or whatever. Make sure you play with the one that you want. Now against players, there's a coin flip in the beginning to choose who goes first. Now in this one against the AI, it just chose for me to go second. It's gonna be giving me advice and stuff, whatever. Uh, but yeah, normally you flip a coin and then someone goes first. The player who goes first cannot attack actually. So this guy could throw, this AI could throw all these out there, but he's unable to attack me until the second turn. Now, for my case, I go second. I'm good to go as if, you know, like a normal duel, basically. Uh, so at the top right, top and bottom left, you'll see life points. Uh, this is, so basically when your life points go to zero, you lose. So you're using monsters to buffer yourself. If there's no monsters on the field and they attack, it attacks you instead of the monsters and you use life, uh, you lose life points. Also, every monster has attack and defense. Okay, so if you're, this is where it's like, I hope you're familiar with Yu-Gi-Oh at all, or else you're gonna be hella confused at this point. So I'm gonna try to go slow here for everyone. I want every audience to be included, not just people who already know how the game works or watch the anime, okay? So you have offense points and defense points, basically. Why that matters? You have two stances in this game. There's normal, which is how these cards are. They're facing upright, like vertical, uh, but you can also place them sideways. Uh, you can also place them face down sideways, we'll get to in a second, sideways, okay? And that is def basically defense mode. If they're in defense mode, it uses their defense stat as their whatever it is. Like if they get hit, is your defense stat higher than their offense stat? Like if this guy attacks, he has 2000 offense. If I throw this down and I put it in defense mode, uh, my defense is lower than his offense. So this one will basically go to, it'll go to the graveyard is what it's called. Uh, it, uh, it'll get killed basically, uh, if he attacks this card. But if I'm in defense mode, that's all that happens. That's just all the card gets destroyed. If I'm hell, if I'm flipped like them where I'm in offense mode and is going off my offensive points, uh, then I'll actually lose life points based on the difference. So say he has 2000 attack, okay? And if I throw this down in offense mode and end my turn, and then it goes to his turn and he attacks mine and kills it. Well, because he has 2000, and I only have 1,500, not only does it kill this Lancer Dragon out, uh, it also will do 500 life points of damage to me. The left, the extra damage, the leftover damage goes to the player and takes away life points if, the, uh, you know, you're attacking something that's in offense mode. Now, when you place them, that's your chance. This game does not let you go back on a lot of these decisions. You can't, it, it turns going segments, we'll get to a second, but there's summon and set. Summon will place it face up in offense mode, like these guys are. Set will set put it face down in defense mode, and it's your only chance to, well, there are other cards with effects that can put it back to being face down, but it's your only chance to catch your opponent off guard. When you play something face down from the start, they don't know what you placed. So if you have something with high defense and you put it down in defense mode, they could attack it, and then uh, they'll trigger the next thing I should be talking about here. So if I throw this one down in defense mode, and it is 1,800, this one only has 1,600. So then what happens then, right? Well, what happens is if he attacks me and my defense is higher than his offense, the attacker will lose life points for that. So in this case, this guy's 1,800, and this guy's 1,600. The difference is 200. This guy's too weak to kill my defensive monster. So if he attacks it anyway, uh, this guy will not die, but he won't kill my monster either. And the attacker loses those 200 because his monster was too weak. So he gets punished for making that dumb move, basically. So that's the way you can punish people by putting a high defense monster face down in defense mode. And then they attack it foolishly. And then they lose life points for that. They don't lose their monster, but they lose life points. Now down here, we have spell cards and traps. Now there are all these slots on the field and I should go over this. So these main five are your monsters. Uh, the, any of the monsters will go in here. Back here are trap card slots. You can have five trap cards on the field at a time and five monsters on the field. Over here is a single slot. You can have a spell over here. And to the best of my knowledge, you can have one spell at a time in this version of Yu-Gi-Oh! And it could be over there. So a spell, 
We'll go down there. I'm going to set this down now. This one is target one dragon normal monster in your graveyard. Special summon that target. You can only activate it once per turn. So I basically, a spell stays. A lot, I don't know if all this, maybe there's spells that don't because there's so many cards in this game. I'm not entirely sure, but generally spells stay and it's something that you can activate every turn or activate once and it's just always going until your opponent finds a way to destroy it using a trap card or some something that'll get rid of it. Uh, so I'm going to set this down. Oh, I guess this one's different. The spell card goes where the trap cards are. Okay, I guess not all spells go over there. there spells will go over there, but not this spell. So I'm going to put my foot in my mouth on that one. Uh, but yeah, spells can go there and some spells can go here. So it's not a, it's not a complete... I guess it might be based on quick play spell. It might have like names here. I'm not actually 100% sure what determines one percent. I've played the different ones, so that is. But that's what that slots for. So that goes there. These traps. I can set them down here. Your opponent cannot declare an attack this turn. I can set that down. I have two of those. I can set those down and activate those whenever I want. Whenever the right trigger happens. Uh, these front ones are different. Okay. These front ones are from fusion monsters or whatever you want to call them. So this deck over here at the bottom left. You click that and it shows all those extra cards that I showed you earlier in this video. Remember on your deck, there were those extra cards? Well, those go right here. And when you click one, it tells you what you need. Now, this one, I need a Lord of D and Divine Dragon Ragnarok in order to do this. Uh, I think that goes from hand or wherever, but I, don't, I need to have both those cards available to me. Now, do I have any of those? I have the Divine Dragon Ragnarok, but I do not have Lord of D available to me, so I can't special summon. If I did, then I could discard both of those, and then I could pull this one out in the field. If I do that, this card will go in one of these two big giant slots in the front. That's for these types of cards, these fusion monsters. Or this one, five dragon monsters must be fusion summoned, and then I can put this one. This one's all crazy, insane, whatever monster. Uh, so yeah, that one would go into one of these slots. The last things in play here are down here is your graveyard. You can click it and it'll show all the cards in your graveyard. Right here is your deck. You can't actually see what's coming next, obviously. But let's go through this real fast. So let's pick a monster to play. I can't play this one because he's six star. So instead I could play one of these. I don't want to play this because if I get the other one, then I can summon. So over in the uh, fusions, if I get Lord of D and Divine Dragon Ragnarok, then I can summon that. Well, I have this one, so I don't want to throw that one away. So we're going to do this one. Um, this one is too weak to beat either of these. So I'm going to play it in defensive mode. And we're going to put it right here. Now, that's everything for this turn. I have nothing left I can do. In this, like, in this part of a turn, you can place traps and spells and place one monster. Or depending on certain effects and different factors, you play more than one. When you are done, you're going to click this. And now there's different phases. So battle phase is what you go to in order to have your monsters attack. That's all that you can do in that phase. So if I go to battle, I can't do anything because I put this guy in defense mode. I can't swap him now. I committed to that when I placed him for the entire turn. There's no, no going back on that. Uh, that's all you can do in there is click and then there'll be a button right here. You hit attack and then attack. And then we got main two. So after all that's done, you have a second opportunity to use uh, trap cards, effects from monsters, a lot, of, all that type of stuff. Again, there's certain, there's, there's times where that will be applicable depending on what cards you have and what effects you have available to you and all that type of stuff. So, uh, main two is definitely a very valuable time to use depending on how your deck is built. When you are done, you're going to end turn, and then obviously it's the other person's turn now. So now you're getting into an actual duel. This is what it's going to be like. So that guy's going through, his AI is going through all his phases. He's placing more cards. And then when he placed that card, now I have a f uh, trap cards that can be activated when something like that happens. So he placed this card, and now I have this option. I have it's two of the same card. So I could use this now if I want to. I can interject right here with, hey, my trap card, which this one is, your opponent cannot declare an attack this turn. Now, I want to do this because my one monster is going to die if literally any of these attack him. So I just want to stall it out and try to get a better monster. There was one in my hand that I could potentially summon, although I don't actually know how that one works. I haven't used it before, but because there are a trillion cards in this game, but maybe I'll be able to summon it. So I'm going to go ahead and make it so that they can't attack. So you don't, I don't need to use a second one. I could use a second one too, but that's, I have two of the same cards, so it's fine. So that gets activated, and now he can't attack. Although it might just be one of his cards. Let's see. Your opponent succeeded in a special summoning. So you also special summoned this, some other card, Marmited Captain. I don't know how that card works, actually. We're going to see. Yeah, I made it so he couldn't attack me. Just like I said, none of his cards could attack me. It wasn't just the one. It was none. So now I draw a card at the start of my turn. All right, pretty standard stuff. Simple. 
I got this one, this cry. Target one dragon normal monster in my graveyard. Special summon that target, and I can only do it once per turn. So, uh, this card is also one that goes back here. It's the same as the one I got last turn. But this guy, I can actually summon this if I sacrifice the weaker monster, like I was talking about. So I got this one, it's a four star. I got this one, which is a six star. And if I destroy that one, I can summon this one. So you must tribute one monster in order to tribute summon this monster. So no special requirements. It could be any type. It doesn't have to be a dragon. It could be whatever. I just need to tribute a monster to get this six star out there. So I'm going to do that. We're going to throw away that one that I placed. And then we're going to place the Kaiser Glider right here. And then let's see if we have anything else to use. So I could, if I wanted, I could target one dragon normal monster in my graveyard. Was You can go to my graveyard by clicking here. Is this guy a dragon? Nor he's a dragon effect. So I don't think I can actually pull him back out. Uh, I'm going to throw this other one down just because. It's not always the best idea because he might have a way to clear my trap cards. But we're just going to throw him down anyway. And I was still left with this. So I got this guy. So next turn. And now we're getting into the actual game. Like This is a no normal game. These are the type of decisions you'll make. So uh, this guy, he can kill most of these. If he attacks this one, it'll, they'll knock each other out. This one will be able to beat my Kaiser Glider because he's 2600. Kaiser Glider is only 2400. But so what I'll probably do here is during battle phase, I'll attack one of the weaker ones. And then when he it's his turn and he wants to attack, I'm going to make it so he cannot attack. So I get one more turn, hoping I get lucky and draw something good. And also, you can always take a look at his trap cards, like what's back there, by clicking it. So I can see this one. The other one's face down, so I don't know what it is. You can surprise me with anything. But the one's face down, I can look at it. And it is the A-Forces, the warrior-type monsters you control. Gain 200 attack for each warrior or spellcaster-type monster you control. So with that being said, that means that I definitely want to clear a warrior because he's getting 200 attack for each warrior type that he controls. So if I clear one of these warriors, all these monsters will lose 200. I don't know if they're even called. I, I, I keep calling them monsters, but are they all considered monsters? I don't know. Anyway, we're going to the battle phase. Okay, it's time to attack. So we're going to attack, and we're going to attack this one, I guess. I don't know why I can't attack that one. I'm actually not sure, but I'm going to attack that one. All right, now they all are weaker or even. Hopefully he won't attack, but if he does, I'm going to use the one thing. Uh, we're gonna go back to main two. And like I thought, that I cannot pull this one out because this one is a dragon slash effect. And this one can only bring a dragon normal to the field. So that one is not applicable. See, this one, this one's dragon slash normal. If this one was in the graveyard, I could pull him back on the field. The other one's not dragon normal. So we're done with this turn, we end the turn. And then you see what he does. And this is generally the flow of the game. This is about how it's going to go for your duels. Although when you're playing people who are really good with crazy cards, you're going to see some insane stuff. Okay, let's see what he played. Uh, activate this card by targeting one monster in your graveyard. Special summon that monster in attack position. When this card leaves the field, destroy that monster. It's monster. Destroy. So he's going to bring his one back. Uh, so that's going to make them all stronger. So I'm going to take any chance I can to activate this so he can't attack. Because that one with 2400 is going to have 2600. Uh, once another warrior gets brought up on the field, I'm assuming he's bringing a warrior back. Yes, he is. That's the only monster I killed, I think. So that's the only one I could bring. So now it's my turn, and if I don't get something good, I'm done. So Fusion Substitute. Not even sure how this card works, actually. This card is always treated as polymerization. Fusion Summon one Fusion Monster from your extra deck using monsters you control as Fusion Material. You can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one Fusion Monster in your graveyard. So I'm going to set this. I don't know exactly how that works, but I mean, I know how all of this game works, but I don't know how every card in the world works yet. So this is supposed to be a beginner's guide, not an advanced guide, but I'm assuming that is monsters I have on the field or whatever, so it's not going to work. So, this duel is honestly in a bad spot based on the cards I've drawn, um, and this is the kind of situation you'll find yourself in. So, I probably shouldn't even play this guy, but if I don't and he attacks, he's just going to clear me off immediately and just end the game. So, I'm going to place... I shouldn't even place that in attack, actually. So, that's a mistake you, you can make. Like, I should have placed him in defense, even though his defense is weaker, because now when they attack him, I'll lose extra life points when he goes down. So, don't make mistakes like that. Also, be careful about this one. You click one uh, during the... This is main phase, not battle. So you might... A, a beginner mistake you can make is thinking, all right, I'm ready to attack, and you click and click without thinking. But in main phase, you, not, you cannot attack. But you can change his position to defense. But if you do that, you are stuck in defense for the entire turn, and there is no attacking, and there's no going back on it. So be very careful about this button. This is a, this is a big commitment to click this button. So definitely be careful with that. So I don't want to change any positions. There's no cards that I can use. Uh, I don't think there's any monsters that I can fuse. Unless I do it from here and then not, as I thought. Alright, so then we're going to go to battle. 
And then we're going to attack again, try to weaken him down a little bit. And hope that he doesn't get a warrior on the field again, which he probably will. I think the AI's goal in this is to just place warriors. And as for this one, I don't want to attack. That monster is going to feed uncontrollably on accident. And uh, that was a mistake. Definitely don't make mistakes like that. Okay. So there's nothing I can do with any of these cards during main two. So we're just going to end phase. So at this point, you should have a pretty good idea of how this works. I was hoping to get a fusion summon in this exact duel. But I think you guys get to understand how fusion summons work. And so you see, this is how it can quickly escalate. Uh, I can do Sliver's Cry. Target one dragon or monster gear. Special summon that target. So I don't know why exactly that activates, but might as well just throw him on because I need to stall my life points. So we're going to pull this guy back up. Uh, face up. We're gonna, we can put him in face up defense, and we're just trying to protect our life points because it, every monster that gets through us is going to do a lot of damage. That also made him attack that one. That card made him attack the one that I summoned, which actually negated everything that turn, which was a godsend. So we got another Kaiser Glider, which is unfortunate because, uh, actually, so let's see if this works out the way. So here's where we're getting to, we're playing Yu-Gi-Oh, right? We're actually, we're in here gaming. So I have this Sliver's Cry, or Silver's Cry. I can pull this one back out. Now I don't know that it's gonna work in this order that I'm hoping, but we're gonna pull this out, face up the fence, put him on. Now the question is, can I now summon this and tribute the one that I just summoned back. So now I got two Kaiser Gliders. So now this Kaiser Glider, I don't, that's, I almost made the mistake I was talking about. I almost put the chain defense, but if you can't fight during this, you gotta remember to go to battle phase or else you can't attack. Okay, so we're going to attack and then we're going to attack the weakest one to try to get some more life point damage on him. Actually, I probably should, I probably should attack the slightly stronger one because he might get more warriors on the field and then that one would be stronger eventually. So now this one's finally weak enough for me to get him with a Kaiser Glider and get him. That'll also weaken this one to where he can't even kill me now. And I don't really have anything. So if he plays, somehow plays two warriors, he's going to get the advantage here. There's not much I can do about it though. So uh, duel's getting exciting at this point. Also, the music from the duel will change as the pace picks up, which is honestly a really cool thing about this game. Although someday if you play it for enough hours, I'm sure you'll get burnt out on the music. But either way. So he went to defense mode. So now he won't lose life points when I attack them, but he's basically trolling himself because now they're so weak, even this guy can kill a strong monster because of how it works. So let me go into this once we get in here. Let's uh, place this guy. This one has a special thing where he inflicts piercing battle damage to your opponent. So he pierces through and does bo bonus damage to your opponent when he attacks them. So even though this guy's in defense, I should still be able to do some damage to the opponent. Now, again, you're gonna change, an efficient, a change to defense position if you click now, so you don't wanna do that. You wanna go to battle if you're just trying to battle. So now I'm gonna have this guy attack his strongest one. So now that he's in defense, it's gonna use his defense points as how he defends himself. And now even my weak one can kill him because he only has 1,200. He's basically trolling. So do that, he won't lose life points, but he will uh, take damage even though he was in defense mode. So the way piercing works is Defense counts as offense. If I have 300 more than his defense, he'll take 300 damage. Normally, though, it's going to be like this case where I attack, and even though I have 2,400, he doesn't take any life points of damage. That's what normally happens. The piercing damage treats defense like offense. Okay, so I don't know what these are. I'm not going to take any risks. We're just going to go ahead and clear the one that we know is there. And then, um, I don't know, some way he keeps summoning them. So I'm not sure what exactly. I'm not. I don't feel like reading the, like the, every card is a trillion words to read. So we're just gonna wing it and go for it. Main fade, nothing for me to do. End turn. So at this point, I feel like you guys should have a pretty good idea of how to play Yu-Gi-Oh, how to or Yu-Gi-Oh Master, whatever. <laughs> I forgot the name of. The, I forgot the name of the game. Uh, but you know how to play this game now. This is a pretty pretty good idea of how to play it. Uh, I went through everything I could think of. Um, just one more card here. During your opponent's turn at damage calculation, make the battle damage you take from this battle zero. And if you do, draw one card. So uh, that's only going to apply if he breaks through. And then go to battle phase. And then we're going to attack these monsters, cards, whatever you want to call them. Okay. And you're just going to keep on going through like this until you have won the duel or until he gets the advantage of and you lose the duel. So that's Yu Gi Oh! Master Duel in a nutshell. That's pretty much the basics of everything you need to know. I know I first went into this game and I was super confused about the, the timing and, the, and what is a main phase versus a main two phase and a battle phase and how do defense mode work in this one? Can you swap it or can't you swap it? So 
Hopefully this stuff helped you out. Hopefully now you have a better idea of how to get started in this game. Again, this guide was mainly focused for beginners, how everything works, how to get gems, you know, the battle pass, how to build your deck, how to craft. I just wanted to cover every basic topic broadly in this video. But if you found this video helpful, uh, consider subscribing to this YouTube because I do want to make more of these videos about Yu-Gi-Oh! Masters in the future. And as I play more and more, I would like to make more advanced guides like deck builds and different things. There's so much in this game. It's like an endless amount of content to make as far as strategizing and different builds, different decks, stuff like that. So I am interested in doing that in the longer term. But today I just wanted to get you started just like I had to get started somewhere of what the hell is going on and how do I do everything. It's just different than the It's not your Yu-Gi-Oh that your grandpa used to play. You know what I mean? It's a totally different thing compared to the 1990s version of PlayStation 1 that I was familiar with. Hopefully this video helped you out. Hopefully this is what you're looking for. If you're looking for advanced stuff, I'm sorry. That's not what this video was. I do apologize. But hopefully I will have advanced stuff on this YouTube at a later date. So keep an eye out for that. And if you want to keep up with me, you can also follow me on my socials. Check out the description of this video below the first paragraph. I'll have links to my Discord, my Patreon, and my Twitch channel if any of that sounds interesting to you. But now hopefully you know what the hell is going on and how to get started playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, the new free-to-play card game that just came out in like late January.